Hi, my name's Tom Myers. I'm with the Barrymore Film Center, and I'm here to introduce a film today for you to uh, view, and it's called A Grocery Clerk's Romance. It dates to 1912. It was shot at one of the most historic surviving film structures in Fort Lee, used in the film industry back in the day over 100 years ago, and that is Rambo's Hotel, or better known as Gus Becker's Saloon. Rambo's uh, was built in the 19th century, about the 1860s. Uh, by the 19, early 1907, 1908, it was used for the first time as a location for film crews who were coming into Fort Lee. They would shoot uh, and use this structure as a Western saloon because it still looks like that. And um, when the studios came into Fort Lee starting in 1910 with the Apex in 1915 with about 17 working studios, they continued to use this as a location. Not only did they use it as a location, but the film crews when shooting in that neighborhood would uh, use the second floor for a changing area where they would uh, have their actors and actresses change into the gowns and costumes. And on the side of the building where there were picnic benches, a little grove, all the film crews would get together at lunch every day they were in the neighborhood and they would have the same bill of fare, ham and eggs, apple pie and coffee, and they would exchange ideas. So you would have one of the great cinematographers of American history, Billy Bitzer, who worked for Biograph and D.W. Griffith. He would pull a tablecloth off a table in the picnic bench uh, on the side of Gus Becker's, Rambo's, hold it up to the sun and start developing the idea of diffusing light in scenes or backlighting scenes. All happened up there. This neighborhood was primarily used for Civil War epics and um, you know western western films so if you went behind rambo's uh you would have the barrymore house on hammond avenue and beyond the barrymore house uh behind that would be meadows and meadows undeveloped where they could erect sets shoot western shoot civil war dramas such as griffith's uh, many civil war dramas including the battle and uh, so that was the significance of rambo's early on uh by 1910 a young bartender from new york city gus becker uh, came to Fort Lee, lived here, and started working for the Rambos as a bartender at that saloon. And Gus knew all the crews. So back in the late 60s, early 70s, when I was a kid in the Coitsville section of Fort Lee, my friends and I, after playing baseball during a summer's day, would go into Gus's at Rambos. We'd get a, a couple of uh, RC Colas, sit on the uh, stools in the bar during the day. Uh, it was a different world then. And uh, Gus would tell us all about the early days. He'd tell us all about the movie industry in Fort Lee. He told us about Max Sennett, Mabel Norman, the Barrymores. Uh, he knew them all personally. And I will pull out a picture of Gus here. So Gus knew all these people, and this would be Gus Becker right here as a young man. That's Gus Becker. So that's the Gus we knew decades later who would tell us all about the movie industry in Fort Lee. And let me just put this back correctly. And then here is Gus. When I knew him, you can see this picture of Gus. He's right there, very natty fellow. I don't know if you could see that. That's Gus. And he lived into the late 1970s. And because of Gus, we understood that history. And that was the beginnings, in many ways, of our interest. And frankly, there wouldn't be this museum, the Fort Lee Museum today, nor the uh, Barrymore Film Center under construction without the, the, the knowledge and the kindness that Gus Becker showed us as kids in Fort Lee. So forever grateful for Gus. And his family donated a lot of material to us, which we will have on display in addition to being on display now in our Fort Lee Museum. It will be on display in the future Barrymore Film Center. And this is a bottle that was on Gus's uh, bar uh, when it closed. And uh, who knows how long that was sitting at the bar. We also retrieved a trunk from the second floor of Gus's, and that included about a half a dozen silent film costumes. They are now in the hands of the New York University Graduate School of Costume Studies. Um, you know, uh, one of our members of the Fort Lee Film Commission is an adjunct professor at that uh, graduate school, Drake Stutzman, and she's working with her colleague Nancy, and their students are restoring these costumes that were used in films in Fort Lee, retrieved from uh, Gus Becker's, AKA Rambo's. Now that, after Gloria died, Gloria Lamone was Gus's uh, daughter, the house was sold by the family, was supposed to be destroyed, and a duplex is supposed to be sitting where it is today. Thankfully, 
The Fort Lee Film Commission did two things when we heard about that. Uh, we created an online petition uh, for people to sign to save that house. We had signatures from around the world. And we contacted Mayor Mark Sockledge, Councilman Armin Pohan, Councilman Harvey Somer, the entire council. The mayor went up with myself and Harvey Somer um, to look at the building. He got the keys from the developer. He, had a, he wanted to come up with a way to save the building. We already had a museum being constructed for film, so he wanted to do something innovative that wouldn't cost taxpayers money. They came up with an idea of having the Fort Lee Housing Authority purchase the building through a developer's fund, and then the Housing Authority did that, and then he applied for a flash grant from the state to restore the building so they could put two apartments in there, affordable housing units for the families of veterans, which are there today. The saloon was pulled out after Gus died in, uh, by 1980, so there wasn't anything left of the saloon in there, but the structure itself dated back to the 1860s, looked very much like um, we remember it from the movie days. So that building survives. We have a marker, the Fort Lee Film Commission, Barrymore Film Center has a large marker outside detailing its history, and it's a great connect to our past and a very important part of our past. So the film we're gonna show today is helped us save the building. Uh, we originally found out a good friend of ours, Paul Garuki, a film historian and preservationist from, um, uh, from uh, Michigan, had this film in rough form. He was in the process of restoring it. He allowed us to use it in rough form to put it on our website because the whole film, 90% of that film, shows the exterior of Rambos in 1912. Why? Max Sennett, who was working uh, with D.W. Griffith, the biograph from 1909 to 1912, met Mabel Norman, who Griffith brought out from Brooklyn in 1911. And by 1912, 1912 the summer of 1912, Griff, uh, Max Senna broke off from Griffith to start his own company, Keystone and Fort Lee, that summer, along with uh, his, uh, his girlfriend and great actress, um, Mabel Norman. But he didn't have a physical studio in the early days of that summer. So he, all of the films he shot were on location, no interiors. And this is a perfect example of it. So by the fall of uh, 1912, Mac and Mabel went out to California, built up a real studio. And uh, Mac would later in 1916 send Mabel, Norman, Roscoe Arbuckle, and a troupe of Keystone uh, performers and technicians to Fort Lee to operate out of the Triangle to make films. And those are great films. We'll talk about some of them later. Um, but in any event, this is a grocery clerk's romance. This film helped us save that house. So take a look at a grocery clerk's romance. I hope you enjoy it. It's an early, early Max Sennett film, and it showcases one of the most important surviving structures in the borough of Fort Lee, and that is Rambo Saloon, So, which is located on First Street, not far from school number three in the Coitsville section of Fort Lee. So enjoy. Thank you.